body, language, and you. Have you ever wondered what to do with your hands when you're on video or during a speaking presentation? You know, if you just add one particular gesture to your presentation, you could have the audience doing exactly what you want them to do. 84% of the time. You heard it right. 84% compliance just by making some small tweaks to your body language during your presentation. In this video, I'll be showing you how to increase the know, like, and trust factor faster by using positive and powerful body language. Sound good? Then stick around. Q&A Tuesday, all your voice questions answered. Hi, I'm Elisa James, holistic voice and presentation coach, and I help business people speak up and out with confidence and competence on stage, on podcast, and on camera. You know, today we're speaking about body language. And when I mean body language, I'm including both the way that we hold and move our body and the way that we use our face and our hands. All of these elements are critical to making a good impression with your audience. But today, I want to focus on the three simplest things that you can do to look and feel more confident in front of your audience so that you can win them over as fast as possible. Let's start with a short list of what not to do in a speaking presentation and why. Here are the biggest don'ts five negative body language signals to avoid at all costs. You ready? Number one, the fly swatter. Don't be waving your arms around so much like you're swatting flies all over the place. Every movement that you make in your speaking presentation will either strengthen your message or distract from your message. You know, I see so many enthusiastic YouTubers waving their arms around too much, trying to grab everyone's attention. But all that does is turn people off. It's super distracting. You're going to get the swipe. Have you ever been super nervous when you had to do a speaking presentation for work? People are gonna to go to the next video because that is too much. It's not strengthening the message, it's distracting from the message. And the message is the most important thing. Number two, the look of death. It doesn't matter how well you know your content if you're teaching it with the look of death. The look of death is when your eyes are dead, lacking in engagement, and you're speaking as though you're a deer in the headlights. Scared, as though you've just seen a ghost. You know, I see this so often in my students. They know their content, they're experts in their field, but as soon as that camera goes on, <gasps> the look of death. When you have dead eyes, and doesn't matter how much you're speaking, people will not be able to connect with you because you are not connected to your material. It will make you seem like you're really insecure and really scared because that's what the look of death looks like. Deer in the headlights. Number three, the back off. This is another common body language fault that I see in aspiring speakers when they're feeling a little bit of fear by standing in front of their audience. They literally come on and then they back away from the camera or the audience. When we back away, we're showing our audience that our fight or flight has already kicked in and we really don't want to be there. Don't give this clear cut message of insecurity to your audience. They need you. They need your message and you're there for a reason to change people's lives. So stand strong and deliver with power. The back off can also be heard in the voice. If you start a sentence strong and then lose confidence or lose breath support, then your voice might back off as well. 
This makes it much harder for people to hear you. And again, you're showing your insecurities to the audience. So be very careful when you turn up on stage or on camera that you don't automatically step back a few paces or move backwards away from the camera. I see it really often in my clients when they're first starting out. Stay strong, stay engaged with your content and stay rooted to the one position. It will help you feel more confident and seem more confident to your audience. Don't back off. Number four, the family jewels. Now girls and guys, this one is for you. Although, you know, I think the guys do this a little bit more often. Protecting the family jewels. Now, when we're subconsciously nervous or insecure, we tend to want to hide or protect ourselves from potential threats or danger. The amygdala, the most ancient part of the brain, is the warning system that tells us when to run when it sees or hears or feels something that doesn't seem quite safe. You know, you can override the need to protect yourself and your family jewels because it shows the audience how insecure you are and it cuts off your energy to the audience with a closed position. So please avoid protecting the family jewels. More about that later. The last don't, number five, is the dominatrix. By standing in a position like this, a position of power, it tells the audience that you feel the need to be bossy and domineering and you become a dictator. This stance is used by people who want to feel dominant in a conversation. Perhaps you've seen this when your mum was angry at you or your boss was giving you an order. This sort of stance will make the warning system in the brain fire for some people. Their ancient brain, their amygdala, will immediately go into some sort of alert and make it very hard for them to listen to you and comply with your requests. That signal alone in a quiet or shy person will make them feel even more secure. So only use this stance in preparation for your performances. Stand in the power position before you get on stage so you help yourself feel more confident, but don't use it on stage in communication. It is not a positive communication tool. And I believe that we should use our body language to inspire, not dominate. So think about that before you go on stage. Don't get into the power position and dictate to your audience. Inspire them from a position and stance of confidence and openness. So now you know what not to do, let's look at some really important things that you can do in your presentation to make your presentation even more powerful, whether that's on stage or on camera. The first one is open stance. Every time you present, whether you're on stage or on camera, open stance is the best. When your body is fully open to the audience, you're giving them the signal that you're approachable, confident, and friendly. This will immediately disarm the audience and remove any objections or triggers that they might have previously had. Open stance. So think of it as an open mind, an open heart, an open throat chakra. When we're open to giving and sharing and educating in this way, your presentation will be more well received and people will listen more attentively. So use this open chest, open throat, open stance to your advantage. The next one is palm power. There are three main hand gestures that people tend to use in presentations. Palm up, palm down, and the point. The way that we use gestures is extremely important, especially when the audience are guaranteed to react in a certain way. Studies show that one of these gestures is much more powerful than the others. Can you guess which one it is? Let's do a little experiment so you can see and experience this for yourself. I'm going to give you a simple instruction in three different ways. I want you to tell me in the chat below what you notice when I give you instructions in a particular way. 
Let's try number one. You ready? I want you to go and get your phone. I want you to bring it back to your computer. Now get your voice recorder out and hit record. Okay? How does that feel to you as a listener? It sounds like I'm bossing you around, right? Or perhaps like you're in trouble for something. As though you had no choice. It's not a good feeling for the listener using the point. And when you speak and give directions with the point, studies show that there's only a 28% audience compliance with this directive. 28%, that's pretty low. So let's try it again. This time with a different hand gesture. Write in the chat below what you feel this time. Now, I want you to go get your phone and bring it to the computer. Now grab out your voice recorder and hit record. Again, it still feels like I'm bossy and I'm giving you an order, doesn't it? Palms down is an age old power signal. We have a lot of strength in that movement for pushing and exerting force upon something. So again, it's not great to use this in a presentation. This palm down hand gesture only gets you 52% compliance in any audience. And it doesn't feel good and it doesn't look good. Now let's try one more. Palm up. Now I want you to go and get your phone, bring it back to the computer, and then I want you to open your phone, your voice recorder and hit record. Okay, go and grab it now. You can see that this way of using your hands, palms up, feels more inviting to the audience. It's not bossy or aggressive at all. In fact, it's like a welcoming gesture. I'm bringing you into my fold, into my circle of safety. And it's no surprise that using this hand gesture, palms up, has been shown to get you 84% audience compliance. That's a huge difference to the other two gestures, 84%. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is a little stance called the newsreader. This is great to use if you have no idea what to do with your hands and you're afraid that you might wave them around too much. This is what it looks like. You'll see this stance in a newsreader. If you want to feel and look more confident, more intelligent and calm when you're speaking, try the newsreader. If you don't know what to do with your hands, at least do this. Many of my clients are journalists and because they need to deliver content that's dry and serious a lot of the time, they're taught to be very minimalistic with their hands. Less distracting. This is very common hand position for a newsreader. Either this one at waist level or this one. This stops you from fidgeting and moving your hands too much. And this position, the steeple it's also called, makes us feel confident and calm and it makes you seem like a deep thinker. It will also help you slow your breathing down and give you time to think when you're speaking. You know, sometimes less movement is more powerful. The only thing you really need to watch in this position is that you're not holding your hands too tightly and then you forget to breathe. Some people, when they grip their hands like this or pull their hands like this, it makes you hold your tummy too tight and stops you from breathing. So make sure you're grounding yourself, breathing normally and just gently touching your hands together. It will bring you to a place of peace and calm and you'll be able to deliver your content with confidence and competence. So use the steeple if you don't want to do anything else. You know, our body language is an outward reflection of our inner emotional state. But we have the power to change our state. We can shape our state by changing our shape. Remember that. We can change our state by making a new shape. So that's it for this episode of the Voice of Confidence TV. If you found this helpful, please share this video with a friend. Maybe he could benefit or she could benefit from some of the tips inside this video too. Remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you don't miss the next video. I'm Elisa James, your friendly neighborhood voice coach, and I will see you next time. Bye.